As I briefly mentioned not too long ago, I recently purchased a Nintendo 64 console and a used copy of Paper Mario. Just for fun, I figured I would check out the previous owner's save files. Uh, the first one had 10 golden little oinks and the pen. And given the fact it's only a 3% chance to get a single one, I was surprised to say the least. But then it got me thinking, if I were to sell my own cartridge, what would be an interesting way to set up the files for the next owner? After all, we do have quite a few glitches at our disposal. Let's begin by appropriately naming our saves. Personally, I would choose something that spells out a four-word sentence, such as, Don't choose these files. The goal here is to create unique files that prevent the player from ever progressing. Starting with file 1, we can play the entire game normally until after beating chapter 7. Instead of heading to Star Haven and taking the fight to Bowser, return to Mount Lava Lava. The room before the Lava Piranha boss becomes full of magma following the eruption, preventing access to those areas. However, in this exact position, facing left and using Lackluster clips us out of bounds. Holding left at this point causes Mario to respawn on the edge of this rock, resulting in a small window where downright can be input. Performing the glitch correctly should spawn Mario underneath the magma so we can continue forward. Unfortunately, another exploit is required to advance, since there is an invisible wall in the middle of the room that cannot be escaped. Luckily, Lackluster is very broken, and his position can be manipulated by mounting his cloud, hopping off, and using him once again at the right time when he begins to approach Mario. Our position is offset through the wall, and we can maneuver out of bounds to bypass the softlock. This repeats the eruption sequence, which is responsible for ending Chapter 5 and playing the next Princess Peach cutscene. The keyword there is next. Sure, the game plays the correct Peach cutscene if our story position is in Chapter 5, but the thing is, we're in Chapter 8, and there is no Chapter 8 Peach intermission. We are prompted to save the game immediately before the cutscene plays, and doing so after this glitch causes the file to permanently softlock, since no such cutscene exists. Choosing this file will now simply force the player to watch Bowser's castle endlessly float in space. The second file will use that same Peach Warp glitch, but to a different effect. Ensure most of the game is cleared, up to Shiver Mountain. While there, Mario encounters these pillars, each containing a fairly decent item. You are free to take the items, however, a block of ice will descend unless you replace it with something else. If you decide to leave any of the ice blocks, and then use Peach Warp to automatically complete Chapter 7, Mario will be teleported to the front of Crystal Palace, beyond the Pillar Room. Saving the game right before that Peach intermission may give the player a temporary false sense of hope, as Chapter 7 does have a Peach cutscene. But this experience will be short-lived, since there's no way around the icy wall when attempting to leave. File 3 will take a much different approach. This time, complete up to Chapter 5 and reach the largest room in Mount Lava Lava. Ensure Mario has only one health and no life shrooms in his inventory. Notice a couple springs are placed here, two of which are connected, with the higher spring leading to the platform with a save block. Normally it is impossible to move while the save block text is active, but by hitting only the high spring, movement related memory addresses are improperly set. Combining this effect with a spin jump into the block allows us to retain control, making it possible to save anywhere in this room. The difficulty here is that pressing A will not only cause Mario to jump, but will select a highlighted option. We need to clear a few steps, but also need this selection box active. By switching between both options, there is a window where a jump can be safely executed. To help explain this next step, keep in mind falling on a spiky enemy outside of battle will force us to first strike it, which ends up hurting Mario for one damage. By taking the zipline for roughly a second, then selecting the top option while jumping off by inputting A, we save directly above a spike top. The automatic jump attack instantly results in a game over, sending us back to the main menu. If this file is chosen again, Mario will take damage before the player can intervene, causing infinite game over screens. Our final permanent softlock will take advantage of Goompa. It seems like I talk about him every other video, but for anyone unfamiliar, this guy is only supposed to follow us temporarily. His grandson Goombario ends up joining Mario's cause, but if you skip that whole scene using a series of frame-perfect inputs, Goompa is stuck by our side. Eventually, he does get replaced when we obtain other partners. 
Despite this, he remains unlocked and only is selectable during battles, solely due to skipping Goombario. For the sake of this video, Goompa can remain in hiding until Chapter 6 is complete, in which case we will need to enter a fight to make him our active follower. Upon entering Mayor Penguin's house in Chapter 7, Mario is accused of murdering him, and the local residents restrict anyone from leaving until the true culprit is found. At this point, we are required to use sushi to swim underwater and retrieve a warehouse key to find a suspect. The problem is, with Goompa, attempting to switch partners will crash the game, turning the screen into something like this. Hit the nearby save block, and it won't be too long before an unsuspecting player realizes they are stuck in Shiver City. Selling the game at this point would greet the buyer with possibly the strangest files without hacking. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for watching.